Hey everybody and welcome to another exciting movie review here on Sell Me a Movie, a segment of Cavalier Studios where what we do is we discuss exactly what movie you guys have maybe recommended um, or who that's been out in theaters as of right now. So this week we will be discussing Dune Part 2. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on all social platforms. Uh, if you are still new to the channel, this is kind of where we discuss not so much of what movie reviewers think, but what I personally think. Yes, I know it's reviewing a movie, but regardless, though, this is my personal take. It's not influenced with anybody else. So with that in mind, go ahead and, like I said, subscribe to the channel, follow us on all social platforms, and let's get started. Hello there, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and children. Like I said, I actually went to go see Dune 2 over the weekend, and honestly, this is probably one of my favorite films this year. Honestly, it'll probably be very tough to beat my favorite film of Dune 2 with all the other movies that are coming out. Yes, I mean, the only obvious contender possibly is Godzilla vs. Kong, but I already know that's not going to dethrone it. So if you're kind of new to the Dune series or Dune movies, it is based on a book, Dune. Uh, there are about 21 adaptations to it, whether if it's the main so story, uh, side plot, side stories, the children of Dune, stuff like that. Um, this is actually the second movie adaptation to it. The first one was in 1984. Uh, I'm not too sure if it did receive a lot of positive things about it. All I know is they never made a sequel to it. Um, but I do remember seeing it as a kid once. However, like I said, this is more of a reiteration of the really of a remake of the Dune uh, books movie adaptation to it. Um, from my understanding, it's more to the books. I can't really say more of the 1984 one, whether if it was true to the books or not. This one is part two of the first movie. So it kind of tells you a little bit more that the book is so thick that they actually made two films of it and not just one solid one and compressed everything together. So Dune 2 is actually directed by uh, Dennis, and I'm probably going to butcher his last name, but it's Villeneuve, Villeneuve, uh, Dennis Villeneuve. Um, he is actually the director of many films that you may have seen, such as Sicario, Arrival, Blade Runner 2049, and of course the first Dune movie. Now when it comes to actors of this film, it's all heavy hitters like Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Javier Bourdain, uh, Josh Brolin, Austin Butler, Florence Pugh, Dave Bautista, Christopher Loch Walken, Leah Sidhu, uh, Stellan Skarsgård, uh, Charlotte Rampling, and, and quite honestly, probably the most surprising was Anna Taylor-Joy. I'm not going to say exactly who she plays in it, but if you've read the books, you probably have an understanding of who she may. She is uncredited as of right now from my understanding in the credits, um, but she does play a, I mean, an important part of it in, in a certain way. But like I said, if you guys read the books, you probably know of it. Um, so again, I can't say much because that's kind of ruining part of the story. Now, where Dune 2 takes place is exactly where Dune 1 leaves us off at. Uh, so Dune 1 kind of leaves, leaves us on a good cliffhanger, but also a true ending to the first film to lead to the second one. Overall, though, I will get this out of the way. The only negative thing I will say about it is the fact that at some parts it does feel a little slow. I did check my uh, phone, or I'm sorry, my watch, just to make sure that exactly where we were on timing. So, I mean, there's one sequence where I did check the time because um, it kind of dragged it a little bit, but when it ramps up, oh boy, does this film ramp up. The cinematography is absolutely go gorgeous. It really is gorgeous. This, the CGI of everything looks flawless, and it's exactly what a lot of people are saying is this generation of filmmakers or film enthusiasts are going for more of a uh, an enjoyment of the film. So they don't mind watching a three hour movie or close to three hour movie as long as the quality is good. And that's exactly what this film brings is good quality, good storytelling. And I'll be honest, I have never felt this much, much bass in the theater in my whole entire life. I could have swore that my chair was a massaging chair. That that's how much bass was in this film. Uh, when it comes to sound effects, I really hope this gets an Oscar for it because, again, amazing quality to it. Honestly, as far as this film goes, I would rate it a 9.5, if not 10 out of 10 on every single scale. 
I hope this gets an Oscar for Best Picture. Uh, Zendaya did a wonderful job, um, as well as Timothy Chalamet. Now, Zendaya does play, of course, the girlfriend, but not so subtle girlfriend to Timothy Chalamet's um, main character, Paul. Uh, but regardless, though, whenever she needed to be emotional, she was. Whenever she needed to be strong, she was. Uh, every character was at the top of their game, I will honestly say. Uh, and the fight sequences was phenomenal. Uh, the little fight sequence between Timothy as well as Austin was done flawlessly. I don't see where they could have failed in that. Um, now, this film is PG-13, though, honestly, they could have made this film R with the amount of action but also fighting sequences. There was... Um, spurts of it where they could have shown a little bit more that kind of tipped the tier to that R rating, but they didn't. Um, and I don't know if it's part of the book, but there is a sequence where the whole screen was black and white. Uh, it, it does play part into, of course, the black sun, as they say in the film, which, of course, I do understand that that's probably part of the book. But as we know from Kill Bill, either Volume 1 or Volume 2, Quentin Tarantino's film, that film was originally going to be NC-17, but he did don't tone it down from color to black and white so he could get that rated R rating because it doesn't show as much blood. So I don't know if that plays part of it too, but regardless though, this film is phenomenal. Please go see it in theaters. I cannot sit, say that and stress that enough. You will not be disappointed. And in all honesty, go see it on the biggest screen possible. But if you guys have seen it though, what did you think? Was there honestly anything that you didn't like about it? Me personally, there wasn't nothing if at all just like i said maybe dragged in a certain certain sequence but again leave a comment down below follow us on all social platforms if there's a movie that you guys want to see me uh watch and review leave a comment down below on what that film is and of course we'll see you guys next time for the next review mm -hmm.